Some people have been asking me about the process of making my battle vest, which I didn't originally plan to record, but I decided that I could do some short snippets of the process and just make it in this very simple vlog style video, I guess. I haven't done much work to the vest yet. If you haven't watched my earlier videos, you should probably watch the one where I turned this jacket into a vest. And also the videos where I showed you all the patches that I'm gonna put on it. But for now, the only thing I've put on it permanently are these collar clips. I already had a pair left over from earlier. Uh, I bought these from eBay a while ago to put on some other jackets that I have. And I had a spare pair, so I just put them on this battle vest. I just really like the look of them and they're also featured in Preacher, which is a really cool series that I watch. You can get really fancy high quality ones where you screw them on, but these only have the few clips on the back because they were really cheap. So I did add a little bit of hot glue just to better secure it to the collar. I also mentioned earlier that I wasn't sure if I wanted to make my own pockets on this vest, but after finding out that I'm most likely going to a concert next year, I thought it would be practical for that reason. So I added two pockets and I used the leftover scraps from the sleeves. So I put one on the inside of the front, just a small side pocket. It's not that wide, but it's quite long. And I made sure that it would at least fit my cell phone. I'm lucky to have a sewing machine, so I used that for this. I did a double seam all around just to make it extra secure and on the top i also did like an extra seam right in the corner here so a bit further in on the opening so that the flap doesn't hang too much when it has a little bit of wear to it and then i also decided to make a big pocket in the back i have my back patch pinned on the back side so you can see the needles here and so I try to fit the pocket within where I'm putting the back patch so you can't see it from the back side. I think I could fit at least two phones in here, maybe one and a half phone size. This top edge here did turn out a little bit wonky because it was the first seam that I did. And I went with the, a very close seam stitch because I wanted it to be as secure as possible. But since it is a stretchy fabric, it kind of stretched the fabric as I was sewing. So it is a little bit wobbly, kind of. Maybe do a test before you start on your vest if you're very particular about that sort of thing. I really don't care. Um, it's in the back anyways and no one's gonna see it. You could also put either buttons, even just a strip of velcro, if you want the pocket to be nice and secure in the back. This is the back of the vest so far. I've only pinned down the back patch because after I did the two pockets, I actually ran out of <laughs> black sewing thread for my machine. So that's all the work I got done yesterday. And it's uh, Easter holidays now, so I'm gonna have to wait a few days until the stores open back up again before I can get new thread. So that was kind of bad timing, but yeah. I did test out the placement of the patches just to see what kind of layout I wanted. And I guess I can insert the photos here so you can see since I took them off again. I had a lot of square patches, so it was kind of easy to just line them all up on the front and choose a few of the ones that I wanted on top of the chest and on the back piece. But after looking at it, I think I will move them around a bit and maybe either I might keep this whole back part for spikes. I have two different kinds that I want to put on my jacket and I want at least some parts of the vest to be kind of fully decked out in spikes. Like I have three different spaces where I can see myself wearing them and that is on top of the back here, maybe with the Iron Maiden patch in the middle or down on each side here. This is like a weird spot for the patches I feel because it kind of wraps around your sides. But I also kind of want spikes to be visible from the front, so I'm also thinking on top of the shoulders here and maybe even down here and have a few of the smaller patches kind of work their way into the spikes on top here. 
and that's what I have going on right now. I'll try and better figure out the placement of the patches before I get new thread, and then I'll check back in with you later. This is the worst camera angle possible, <laughs> but I'm back and I've had a second sewing session. I finally got my new thread yesterday, so I was able to sew on a few more patches, but then something else happened. This thing just popped off my machine, so I'm gonna have to fix that before I can continue. I have no idea how to do it. That's one amazing thing about YouTube is that I can just search for it and immediately learn how to repair it. And on top of that, I did a really bad boo-boo. I hope you can see the vest from there. So I did all of these patches yesterday and I was so happy with it and I felt so accomplished until I remembered that I sewed the inner pocket. <laughs> So now the inner pocket I made has been sewn shut like 50 different times in 50 different angles. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, if I don't want to keep the pocket, then life can continue as normal. But if I do want the pocket, which I think I do, I'm gonna have to undo all the stitches that are on top of the pocket and then sew those seams on the patches by hand. I don't know if I have the patience for that because that's probably gonna take a whole day. <laughs> so maybe just screw the pocket? I really don't know. But yeah, this side is almost done and then today I managed to sew these five patches on before my machine broke down. And so the front is almost completely done. So I only have the My Dying Bride to kind of go opposite of the iced earth there. It's gonna be on this side here and I'm gonna put both Sanctuary and Children of Bodom at the very top here. I also finished the back patch yesterday, so this is sewn on now. I had My Dying Bride at the bottom here, but I decided to switch it out for Blind Garden since it's yellow. It kind of matches the back patch better. I kind of just want to put the maiden patch on and then fill the rest with the two different spikes but I don't know if that's gonna be like too empty for the back. So I do have the non-music related patch and the hammerfall one that I cut to kind of better fit the shape of this one. So I'm thinking I might put this in the middle with these on the sides. And then also maybe have spikes around them, but I haven't really decided on this back part yet. I did take a few clips of me sewing with the machine, so maybe I'll insert those here somewhere. But so far I'm really liking sewing on patches with the machine, even though I had quite a few hiccups. Not only the, the thing coming off the machine, but also the thread uh, either getting ripped or just jumping out of the needle. And also sometimes the under thread gets stuck. On some parts, like right down here where you have the bottom edge of the vest, it's quite thick. So it almost wouldn't sew the patch on top of there, because it was just too much fabric. So it hasn't been a smooth ride, <laughs> but still it's so much faster than doing it by hand. If I had been doing this by hand and only working two days, I probably would have like four patches on here, but now I have almost all of them, so even though the machine can be a bit tricky, I still prefer it, I think. Also, if you can see at the Legion patch, this border used to be completely black, but for some reason when my needle went through, it kind of created these white spaces because it moved the black threads. It didn't do that anywhere else on the patch, just on this line. Yeah, I don't know why that happened, but... I don't think it looks too out of place. I'm not gonna bother redoing that or something. This was actually the first like test I did with the layout. Maybe except for a few patches that I switched around. I did test a different layout with having four square patches at the bottom and just two on top instead of all of them on a straight line and then just one at the bottom. But it felt kind of bottom heavy. So I much prefer this kind of 
vertical liner patches instead of having them all at the bottom. So right now I'm just gonna learn how to fix this piece on my machine and then I'm gonna continue doing the front and then I'll probably check in with you tomorrow. A quick update from yesterday is that I was completely finished with the sewing machine. There were only a few patches left that I had to do manually because of different reasons. Mainly these two at the bottom here. The Blind Guardian had a yellow edge and I didn't really have good quality thread for my machine for that. So I used a low quality yellow thread that I did by hand so that I wouldn't mess up the border too much. I also decided to cut the hammerfall patch that I had, that was really big. I kind of cut around the shape here and that was going to be too hard to do on the machine as well, so I also stitched this on by hand. I'm not too happy about having to cut this patch, but I needed something down at the bottom to be symmetrical, so this is just what I have for now. And as for the front goes, it's like 99% done. Or at least it would have been if I hadn't decided to keep the inner pocket that I made. Technically today I only had this My Dying Bride patch left to sew on. But then, since I decided to keep the pocket, I had to undo all the stitches that had sewed this shut. And I've already done that, so the pocket is now open. But that means that I now have to redo these three... Uh, four patches that were on top of the pockets because they are now loose. You can maybe see some loose threads here from when I ripped the seam. So today's project is sewing by hand and it will be to just try and sew the My Dying Bride patch and these four patches down on top of where the pocket is without <laughs> sewing it shut again. And after that I'm actually done with all the patches. I don't have any more patches that I want to put on them, but I do feel like I want to get at least two more patches so that I can fill out this space underneath the arms. I think it will be uncomfortable having spikes there, especially at a concert where you might get pushed around a little and have your arms bump into your sides. If it were like flat studs or cones, then it might have been fine, but since I have spikes, I don't think that's going to work out. I also thought about filling the space between the buttons with pins, but I'm also scared that I will lose them, so yeah, we'll see. So today I'm going to enjoy my coffee, do some hand stitching, and probably listen to some music while I do so. Good morning, and welcome to most likely the very last update for my battle vest. It's not that big of an update because it doesn't look that different from the last time you saw it. But basically I am done with all the patches now. If we look away from the fact that I decided to buy five more patches and we'll have to put those on as well. <laughs> but if that wasn't the case, this would kind of be done by now. Also apart from the spikes, obviously. I don't think it will be necessary for me to record adding the spikes to the vest, so I might just sneak a few pictures on my Patreon instead. But let's take a closer look at the vest. So we have a very symmetrical front that I'm actually very happy with. Three to four square patches at the front with one extra square at the bottom. We have the two logo patches on either side. And at the top we have Children of Bodom, which will hopefully be surrounded by spikes eventually. Same on the other side with the double Hecate Enthroned. And also since May is coming up, which is when we have Norway's National Day, I was able to find this really small pin with the Norwegian flag. So I put that on the collar. I'm very happy that I decided to keep the inner pockets and hand stitching the patches above the pocket was luckily not as anger inducing as I thought it would be. <laughs> so I'm happy I decided to do that. The back is still kind of far from done, but for now I've just kind of color coordinated it with my back patch, mostly like blue and yellow stuff. This maiden patch is a little bit crooked. 
putting this on was a perfectionist's nightmare because after I put my back patch on, I definitely noticed that like the vest itself isn't completely symmetrical. This edge has more space to it than this edge. So it was also kind of difficult to place the back patch completely centered. And also up here, if you can see the seam that goes here along with the top collar, like the collar is not symmetrical to the seam or the back patch. So I kind of had to put the maiden patch somewhere in between. So if it looks a little wonky, it's because it is. <laughs> I have decided to fill the rest of this upper part with spikes. If I see that the maiden patch is so wonky that it'll affect the placement of the spikes, then I will just have to undo it and sew it on again with the machine. But if not, I'm just gonna leave it there because I don't plan on keeping the maiden patch on there forever because I will most likely switch out my back patch next year with the red Ed Guy patch. So then I might switch out this one as well to kind of fit the colors better. And like I said, I've ordered five more patches that I'm waiting on. And depending on what color they have and what shape and what they look like, I might have to undo. Uh, I probably will keep this square one at the bottom, but this hammerful patch, maybe I'll have to undo and switch spot for it. I don't know yet. But yeah, that's basically just what I have left is to wait for the patches to arrive, which can take up to a month or even more. And then my vest is basically done. So yeah, just because I have to wait a long time for new patches to arrive, I thought I would just do the last update now. And then when I've received the last patches and have done the spikes, I will just do a full reveal later on. So for now, <laughs> this is what you get. Approximately 80 or 90% done battle vest. <laughs> Let me know what you think down in the comments. And as always, a huge thank you to my patrons, Fanny, Reed, and Elliot. I really appreciate your support. And then I will see you soon in my next video. Visas.